Welcome to our Forte 5 video introduction. This video is ideal for all users who are taking their first steps with Forte or who have very little experience with the program. Forte is easy to use, and as you'll see, we keep our promises. Forte 5 has a new user interface, which makes everything in the program even easier than before. When you start Forte 5, the welcome window appears. Within the Open section, you can open existing files or select one of the many pieces from the Forte library. To create a new file, select one of the commands in the New section, such as Default Score. We're choosing the Score Wizard, which guides you step by step through your score. This tool is especially useful for beginners. The Score Wizard opens a blank document and the first input window appears. For our practice example, we choose the folk song. Little John. A list of instruments will open next, and here you can select from over 60 instruments, including different voices and combinations. We choose vocals for our simple piece and click on Add and then Next. In the Next window, we can select the desired time and key, as well as the number of measures, and choose an upbeat. Our piece is in 4 4 time and in C major. This corresponds to the default settings. We click on Finish, and the basic elements are now defined. Now we must save our document by clicking in the drop-down menu on the Forte button and selecting Save As. We name our file Little John and click Save. The well-planned user interface is one of the greatest strengths of Forte 5. The program menu consists of 11 main tabs. Each tab contains several groups of related commands and options. Almost every command is accessible with just two clicks. Every option is close at hand. The program is intuitive and easy to learn. When you click on the Forte button, you'll find the standard commands Open, Save, or Print. We can best learn about the various tools by inserting notes and editing them. We'll start with the three operating modes in Forte. They're located in the Home tab in the Modes group. The Select mode can be used to select almost any visual element on your score. For example, if you want to edit, copy, delete, or move it. In this mode, you can use either the Properties palette or the Context menu to edit the selected elements. We choose the Insert mode with the mouse if we want to easily add new elements to our score by using just the mouse. As soon as we click on an element in the input palette, Forte automatically switches to this mode. Forte also gives you the option of using the Insert mode via your computer keyboard to enter musical symbols. You can find an overview of the keyboard layout for the individual symbols in the Help menu under Keyboard Layout. Now we want to add notes notes that are not in the score already. For this, we use the input palette. Here, there's a wide range of musical symbols. We can determine, for example, the notes, volume, tempo, or key of our piece. We begin with inserting notes into Little John. To do this, we select the desired type of note under the Notes tab in the input palette. We need a quarter note. By clicking on the note, Forte is brought automatically into the Insert mode. Move the mouse pointer to the first bar. The Music Ruler appears. This handy tool helps us with note entry. We can determine on exactly which beat in the measure we want to add a musical symbol. And we can insert notes anywhere in the score without having to insert rests. We can easily get rid of mistakes by using the Back or Undo arrow in the Quick Access Toolbar. We place the first note by clicking with the left mouse button on the first beat. We enter the notes of the first four bars of the song in the same way. Forte automatically adds rests to create a measure with the correct amount of beats. The rests disappear when a note is added in their place. This feature greatly simplifies the input process. Let's listen to the first notes. We click the play button in the start menu.
We don't like the length of the third notes in the first, second, and fourth bars. They're too short. Here, there should be half notes, so we'll edit the existing notes. We switch back to the Select mode. We can change any elements that are already present in the piece by using the Properties palette. You can turn this tool on and off with one click on Properties in the Palette group. Here, we can select a musical symbol and edit it. We want to change three quarter notes. We select these three notes by clicking on them one at a time while holding down the control key. Now they're highlighted in red. We select the playback tab in the properties palette and click on the small arrow next to duration. In the drop down menu, select half note and click on apply. The quarter breaks are now superfluous and disappear automatically. Here's a tip. If you only want to change a single note, it's faster to just delete it and replace it with a new note. The scores in the third bar will now receive a slur. To do this, we use the input palette. We select the slur icon under notes and draw a rectangle around the notes in the third bar. The slur has now been added. The first two notes of the fourth bar should be played in staccato, which we find in the input palette under accents. We click the staccato accent and select the notes. Another useful action is copy measures. In Little John, the first two measures are identical with measures 5 and 6. To indicate this, we click on the Edit tab, then on Copy Measures. The dialog box opens, and we enter measures 1 to 2 and select all items to be copied. Below, we enter the insert position at measure 5. Now we enter the notes of the last two measures and our song is complete. The empty measures at the end of our piece can be easily removed with the Remove command in the Measures group under the Score tab. Let's listen to our piece again. We've now added the first notes with the help of the input palette and edited them by using the properties palette. Now, I'll show you some more common functions. First, let's transpose our piece to a different key. Doing this is very simple. Click in the Home tab, then click on Key in the Transposition group. In the Properties palette, select the desired key signature. In this case, we're transposing from C major to D major, and click Apply. If needed, you can change the direction of transposition by clicking on the right arrow. Next, let's add chord names. For this action, click on the Notes tab, then Chords, and then choose Add. The mouse pointer shows a chord symbol. Click on the corresponding position in the piece. Now in the dialog box, select the chord we want to add. To add our lyrics, We'll need a little more space below the first staff, therefore we'll need to reduce the distance between the chord symbols and the staves. We can change this in the Score tab under Layout, Spacing, and reduce the space for symbols above the staves to 2, which is about the space of two stave lines. The distance between tempo mark and added chord has been changed accordingly. Now we can make small adjustments to the layout. We move the tempo mark by holding the control key and moving the arrow keys. Finally, we're going to enter the lyrics. You can find this function in the input palette under Text Chords. Click on Lyric, then on the first note to open the text entry box. We now enter the text directly below the notes. Alternatively, you can also work with the text entry box in the Properties palette. Each dot represents a note. You can separate syllables with a dash. Here, you can also copy text from another source and automatically place it under the notes. Well, we're now at the end of our tutorial video, and now you know the most important basic functions in Forte 5. 
Naturally, you can do so much more with Forte 5. You'll find details about all the features under the Help tab in your program guide or visit our website, www.fortenotation.com. You can also watch our other video tutorials and easily learn what else you can do with Forte 5.